So let's take a look now at the dual slope ADC. We can see from the block diagram that it's similar in structure to a single slope ADC in that it contains an integrator. Even though notice that now the input to the integrator is being switched between the analog input and a reference voltage, which I've labeled negative VREF. Um, it will have to be a negative reference voltage if the input is positive and vice versa. And then the output of that integrator, which I've labeled as VI out, is fed into a comparator where the other input of the comparator is tied to zero. So essentially we have a zero crossing detector. And then the output of the comparator labeled as VC uh, is fed into a control logic, which uh, controls a digital counter and also uh, resets the switch that uh, switches the input of the integrator between the analog input and the reference voltage. So let's take a look at how this circuit works. Just as we did before, we are going to assume an initial condition. And so a a point one will be my initial condition, uh, which corresponds to the state of the circuit when time equals zero. And I'm going to assume that at that point, my output of the integrator, VI out of zero, is equal to zero. The integrator has been reset. The counter has been reset, so my digital output is also a, a binary zero. And uh, the output of my comparator, let's assume, is uh, logic high, even though the, um, whether it's high or low, it doesn't matter as much as uh, that we keep the logic consistent. And uh, what's important is that the comparator toggles at the right point. But let's assume it's high. And uh, let's assume that under this initial condition, my switch is uh, set to the position where it's feeding the analog input VE into the integrator. So V in is what's being fed into my integrator. And again, I'm assuming uh, for purposes of the analysis that V in is a constant uh, for one conversion cycle. So it either comes from a sample and hold circuit or otherwise uh, it varies slowly enough within one conversion cycle that we can assume it's constant. And uh, therefore my VI out as a function of time is going to be negative one over RC times the integral from zero to T of V in DT, which is equal to negative V in over RC times T. So notice that we have a, um, a straight line with a negative slope. The slope equals to um, negative V in over RC. I'm going to draw it over here. This slope is negative V in over RC. So it varies depending on the value of V in. And then I allow my integrator to uh, integrate the input signal for um, uh, two to the n number of cycles, meaning I allow the counter to count all the way uh, to, to one, one, one to its final state. So basically I go from uh, v equals zero, 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 all zeros, all the way to the equals one, one, all ones. And I allow it to charge. And so that means that I have gone through a uh, number of clocks, which is enough clocks to allow the counter to go from its initial state to its final state. Again, this is a simplified representation, but this is uh, two to the n clock cycles. So uh, at time equals t1, um, what's going to happen once my counter has finished counting is my control logic is going to switch uh, the input to the integrator instead of being to the analog input, it's going to be connected now to negative V ref. And so it's going to start integrating um, with a positive slope. The output is going to have a positive slope since V ref is a negative voltage. So at time equals T1, we have that uh, my V ref or negative V ref rather is what's going to be fed to my integrator. And so my VI out of T1 
becomes equal to the integral from um, t1 to t of negative 1 over rc, which I'm going to take it out of the integral already, negative 1 over rc times the integral uh, from t1 to t of negative p ref dt uh, plus the initial condition, which is the value of vi out at t1, which um, will be equal to negative v in over rc times t1, what I've labeled in my graph as v1. And so I can solve for this, uh, v out of t1 will then be equal to uh, negative and negative is positive, so v ref divided by rc of uh, t minus t1, or times t minus t1 rather, minus v in over rc times t1. And so again, um, since my reference voltage is now being fed to the integrator and it's a negative voltage, I'm going to start, my output vi out is going to start going up, as we can see, with a positive slope, uh, vref divided by rc. The Notice that the slope in this case is constant, so the slope here is positive vref over rc, and vref is a constant. It has a delay of t1, which we expect, because we are starting the integration at t1, and it has an offset of negative v, uh, v in over rc times t1, which is the offset that we were expecting. So now we're ready to uh, continue. We know that when v ref over rc reaches uh, the value of zero, meaning the output of the integrator reaches a value of zero, my comparator is going to toggle. We're going to call that uh, time t2, or rather we're going to refer to t1 as this duration, duration it takes for uh, two to the n clock cycles, and t2 the duration that it takes for the output of my integrator to be restored to zero. So at t equals t1 plus t2, then I have that vi out of t1 plus t2 is going to be equal to zero, and my output of the comparator is going to toggle. If it was high, now it's going to go to low because I've crossed, uh, I've done a zero crossing. And so at that point, my control logic circuit is going to stop the counter, latch uh, the counter output, and then uh, reset the, the switch that controls the input to the integrator again. And so at that point, I can calculate my, um, I know that vi out of t1 plus t2 is equal to zero, so I can say from this equation, uh, zero is equal to um, v ref divided by rc times t1 plus t2 minus t1 minus v in over rc times t1. And I just noted that before I expressed, instead of doing this as a function of t, I put it as a function of t1, but that's, that's not correct. So those will be functions of t. Um, and now we can see t1 plus t2 minus t1, as is going to be equal to t2. So these two values cancel, and uh, my rc is also cancel, so I can express now my v ref times t2 is equal to v in times t1, or in other words, v in over v ref is equal to t2 over t1. So basically the conclusion that I have arrived at is that um, my input voltage, uh, or rather the, the relationship the, between the input voltage and the reference voltage, that ratio is going to be proportional to the ratio of T2 um, divided by T1. Now, notice that the number of clock cycles that it took for T1 was 2 to the n. Now, the number of cycles that it takes to discharge that back to T2 is going to be dependent on uh, this value of V1. Because remember, the slope 
on the second half, this slope is a constant. This, the original slope is the one that is a varying slope. And so if I have a, a larger value of V in or a more positive value of V in, then what I will have had, let me draw the that possibility in orange, I will have had something that looked like this. So my slope will have become more negative on the first part. My slope will be a constant on the second part. This is a constant slope because we ref is a constant. And so my T1 will always have been two to the n clock cycles. My T2 uh, will be shorter for smaller values of the analog input and longer for larger values of the analog input. And that's why uh, the ratio of T2 to T1 is larger for larger values of V in and smaller for smaller values of V in. Uh, the highest possible value is when V in is equal to V ref, meaning the full scale, V in is equal to the full scale voltage. And in that case, uh, the ratio is equal to one. Now there are some uh, advantages and some limitations to the circuit. The obvious limitation is that now we have uh, more than two to the n clock cycles. So we have two to the n clock cycles just for the first slope. And then we have uh, a varying number of cycles. Um, so number of cycles is proportional to V in in the second, in the second part, the positive slope. And so in the limit, my, uh, my main limitation or, or trade-off of this circuit is speed. Uh, so my conversion rate is double, or rather conversion time, I should say, because the conversion rate is the opposite. My conversion time is double uh, that for single slope. In the worst possible case, if in my single slope it was two to the n cycles, in this case, in the worst possible case, when V in is equal to its maximum output voltage, or its maximum um, voltage, it will be two to the n, two times two to the n, or two to the n plus one. So that will be the main limitation of this circuit. Speed. It's slower than the single slope. It has some advantages, and the advantages is improved accuracy. And the reason for that is notice that in our calculations, the RC constant cancelled out, and it's essentially because we have the RC constant playing a role both in the negative slope and then in the positive slope. So any errors due to tolerances or temperature drift um, in the values of the resistor or the capacitor are going to cancel out. So therefore, RC, RC errors are cancelled. Clock errors are cancelled out. And the reason for that is you can see that we're uh, taking into account in order to calculate V in the ratio of T2 over T1. So if I have any error uh, in my clock period, then it's going to, uh, basically when we take the ratio, it's going to cancel out. So the only source of error that remains will be the offsets from the, my op-amp, my comparator circuit, my sample of and hold if I have a sample and hold. Um, but that's less sources of error than the single slope ADC. Uh, one last thing to mention is that both for the single slope and dual slope ADC, notice that these are very similar to the ramp ADC or the counter ADC that we had previously seen. And so the, the circuit is simple enough. But notice that in, in this case, even though we have added the integrator and we have added some time, we have gotten rid of the DAC. So we have, um, we have added simplicity to the circuit uh, as well as precision, and what we have lost is speed.